Okay. I'll click it in. Okay. Not problems getting in this time. Okay. All right. Um, today we got to deal with the moon. The moon is a strange energy when it comes to trying to see how it works in the houses. Um, it's definitely there. It just has the signs. Okay. So when we look at the moon, the moon represents our past, our memory, our ability to reflect as a function. It's our reflective memory. And because it's a reflective memory, it, balance, it it also represents our sense of security in the moment. Memory is a funny thing, right? It's like how you're feeling in the moment affects what you remember. So it's your sense of security in the moment and the memories that come up and how you feel, which is why sometimes you get in a place or you get in a certain space and it, it, it doesn't, if it doesn't feel right, it pulls out all these net doubts and worries that are the counter feeling to the moment. Really, spiritually, we're supposed to live in the moment, and the moon is always pulling up these feelings and moods about our security, our basic needs, our basic feelings. And when we see the sign, we see the attitude to these. So I really get a lot of um, psychological or attitudinal information of the signs of the moon. And you see the attitude, the memories, and attitude, the feelings, attitudes of security, your sense of nurturing or being nurtured, all of these basic factors of the, of the moon. Now, when we put it into the houses, it's hard to say this is a nurturing house. It does, it, it, um, or you're nurturing in these things. It didn't quite work like that. The um, each of the inner in, with the planets, each of the inner planets, Moon, Mercury, Venus, are they have their energy and it's really expressive into the house, which is it's hard to see as a specific thing because there's multiple options and multiple levels and multiple attitudes that come into play with how it works into the houses. It's not a simple thing. You kind of grow into it. And it may work in one way in one person's house and another way in another person's house. It's, so it's a question of tuning into it and almost observing or anticipating and then observing to see which level or which way it's working at. One of the first things is because the moon has its phases and it's going through all its, it's always changing. Whatever house the moon is in, it doesn't, it brings a sense of security, a need for security, but it brings also a great, great amount of changes because the moon's changeable. So are the circumstances in the house where the moon is in. So as it puts its energy in those circumstances, it's, I don't know if I would call it destabilizing, but it's certainly not because there's multiple facets that happen there and multiple things going on. You can't rely on it to just be this or just be this one thing or this that, that one thing. As we get to the sun and the outer planets, it's much more distinctive to see the effect of a planet in a house. You can see and we'll make a more direct logical association. Here it's more of a puzzle. Um, and the moon being in Aries is not the same thing as the moon being in the in the first house. Like it's different. So okay. So I think we'll work with the main ideas of memory. It's our memory, our ability to reflect. It's our because of our how we're reflecting. It's also our sense of security in the moment, based on how we're reflecting. We're reflecting on things that are happening now that trigger off memories from the past, good and bad, the whole spectrum. And as they do, we get a sense of security or not security. Um, you could say where the moon is, there's basic needs. There's a need for security where the moon is. It doesn't mean it's always gonna be stable. It's gonna mean fluctuating. And as you're dealing with all the different impressions, you're searching for security there. Sometimes these changeabilities in the sense of 
security or this, I need to have this and is it there or is it not there? To, it comes across as worry. So often the moon can represent this instinctive worry. You're like, okay. Um, I mean, there's so many associations, so many layers to the moon. It's a real magical presence, like the goddess of the moon. But it affects the tides. It affects the water in our body, the up and down and the moods and the pressure on our brain. It affects so many things on a physical level. And we often call it our instincts or our hunches. But the instincts or hunches of the moon, they're these not exactly intuitions, they're just kind of psychic feelings or connections. It's really our impression or feeling of the moment based on the memories that we've had in our life and what memories this situation is triggering or this circumstance is triggering. Now, still got a bit of a cough, so I'm taking a cough, cough drop here. Stuck a bit. Okay. So now, you try to find your moon, what it means for you. It's going to mean different things at age 7, at 10, 15, 20, 30. It's the same process, but it can make different specifics and different impressions going on. So I, I keep having to go around circles with the moon. Like I like the idea, the common sense of basic needs. I need to eat, I need to sleep, I need those basic things are necessary. And I have a certain attitude to those things. And it's your sympathy, your sense of sympathy, how you can be sympathetic or nurturing or to someone else, how you can be increasing the security or decreasing the security and how other people can feel sympathetic with you or not sympathetic to you. This is the dynamic of the moon. Okay, this, who's, who's nurturing, who's not nurturing, who's maternal, who's not maternal, who feels okay, who doesn't feel okay. All of these are part of it, but that's not, when you're trying to look at the, it's all of these things, but when we're trying to look at it in the houses, we're trying to make it more specific as this energy comes, this kind of psychic energy comes down into the world and we can give it extra importance or not extra importance. I mean, most people live in their moon. They don't think necessarily think for themselves, much less evaluate for themselves. And so their sense of importance are all, is really dominated by the moon more than the sun and the path in life. I mean, we all start with that coming out of our mothers and gradually we have to grow into our sun or it's healthy to grow into our own confidence, into our own sun, into our own being. But, oh heck, you have a 16, 17 year old girl on one level, even 18, you even put it up a bit more, but on one level you have the woman, the potential mother, the nurturing person, at the same time, she can go home and feel like a little kid and just want to curl up and sleep beside her mom. So it's like we have our little cocoon or a little nest of security and seeming innocence. And we have our changing nature as we're going out into the world, as we're affecting people, as people are expecting things from us. Um, well, all of these things, these are always going on. And you can see the attitude to these, how come I'm attracting this or how come I'm attracting these people, keep attracting these things. That's still not necessarily a house consideration. But the, um, when we're thinking, Basic needs, feelings, I need to feel secure or I don't feel secure. I need to nurture, or I need to be nurtured. I'm not being nurtured. I don't feel like nurtured. All of these energies of the moon 
all happen at once and they fluctuate, but they happen and they're going into the house or into the world of circumstances around us. So when we have the signs, we see the attitude to these things and it's, you have all the different qualities of the signs affecting how we're projecting our feelings or projecting our memories or reflecting on things, who's moody, who's not, who's nurturing, who's not. I mean, big difference between the Cancer Moon and the Capricorn Moon, just in terms of basic nature of attitude. But right now, we want to just try and get to the Moon and look at it through the houses. <coughs> and I don't know if I have exact keywords and exact things. I don't know. I'm going to have to just jump around like this at this to explain this as best as I can. I think we have to go to the start with the rising or setting. So, like, if your moon is on the rising side of your chart, it's a very different thing than setting. If it's rising, it's the projective instigative side. The moon is just being itself. It's just where it is. It's the earth that's turning. So from the earth, we're looking and we're seeing this. the moon's rising. We're watching it comes up. Really, it's us sinking the other way. Really, the earth is turning, going down, and the moon is staying where it is, but it looks like the sky is going up. That half of the sky seems to be going up because we're spinning on the earth. So that, but in the process, when we look at it on our chart, that's the rising moon. Now, the rising moon can be ri rising and you still can't see it. It can be below the horizon or it can be above the horizon, but it's still rising. It's going from the midnight point, the IC, towards the ascendant and up to the midheaven. That's the rising half. And that's where your feelings get, because I think I tend to work with the angles to begin with. It's your feelings are deeply impressed when the moon is on the IC. That's the beginning of that moon rising. So when the moon is on the IC any day, or just even in your chart, at that point, that's the deepest point for the moon. That's the most secure place. It's the deepest inner. You're motivated by feelings and by security and your basic needs. So, and by mom and by family or home, all of these things have a strong lunar effect that affects your motivation. So if you, whatever you're projecting is gonna be based on your motivation at the IC. So you pick up the motivation of, this is important to me, or this is meaningful. I got, I got my motivation or this, I gotta do this, which partly is coming from the reaction of the day before or the other half of the chart. But we get this inner motivation and we start, I gotta get out in the world, I gotta do something, I gotta go place, I gotta get I gotta get up, I gotta wash up, I gotta get dressed, I gotta put myself together so I can wear something because I wanna go out and see so and so and get this done today. So we have this projection in a day in the houses. So when the moon is there, it adds this personalized, almost needy or intuitive element to each of the areas that are, that are involved with rising, third house, second house, first, 12th, 11th, 10th. So projecting from my ideas to my values and the things I have to feel how I feel about that, how I feel about my identity, how I feel about how to put this out into the world, how I feel about friend, who's a friend and who's not, do I feel secure around that? And do I, am I projecting out my needs to what I need to do for work or career? So as the moon starts really low, you're projecting and it's projecting until it gets really high, that rising side, the projections will have different levels of prominence. The feelings and the moods will be tied up to very personal concerns when it's below the horizon and rising and become much more social and what you need to do out in the world. I gotta do this, I gotta get there, I'm late, I gotta do these. It's gonna project out more prominently as you get to the midheaven. So you can see that projection going out and it's that moon is triggering off that area of the houses as you're going up. You could also see, so the moon's putting its intuitions, its feelings, its sensitivities into those areas and with it, all the memories associated with that. And they're all affecting how confident you're able to project your feelings. 